Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Metal Command Podcast. Tony here with you, and today I'm here to talk about my three Tremors vinyl. Finally got it. Waited over a year and a half for it, but it is finally here. It was part of my pre-order package that I ended up buying from Steel Cartel Records. And Sean Peck, of course, who owns Steel Cartel Records and is also part of the Three Tremors, went through absolute hell to get these done and produced. Uh, so before I go into that, I am going to talk to you about the supply chain issues which is a huge problem for bands and record labels, especially when it comes to getting vinyl produced. So I'm going to touch on that in the second half of the podcast. But the first half, let's talk about this album, right? Three Tremors is a really cool project. For those of you that are not familiar with it, uh, you have three singers. Uh, you have Harry Conklin of Jag Panzer, Sean Peck from Cage, and of course, Death Dealer, and of course, Tim Ripper Owens. And this is a very talented band with a very talented group of singers. I had the opportunity to see them live down in Akron, which is probably about 30, 40 minute drive from me. And it sounded amazing in a small little club. And, you know, all three singers sounded exactly like they do on the record. It was really, really good, really, really well done. And the live show was great. And I love the artwork on this, man. When You, you know, the one thing I like about the, the stuff that Sean Peck does with any band he, that he is involved with is that you have a huge comic book theme, right? He likes comic book art, which is great because comic book art really goes well with heavy metal music. Here, I'm going to open this up, actually, let you guys see just how freaking amazing this thing is. Look at this. I'm gonna move this back. See it? There we go. Um, so very, very cool stuff. And when you take the sleeve out, we have, check this out, man. I mean, this looks cool. Total comic book theme to everything that he does. Seriously. And I think it's all really cool. The best part about this vinyl, though, is this. It's pink. I have played it all the way through once. It sounds pretty good. And as usual, anything merchandising wise that Sean Peck is involved with is always awesome and sounds really, really good. Uh, so folks, I believe as of the recording of this video, he does have some of these copies left. Uh, you can definitely get them. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the hassle and the bullshit that he went through and actually getting this thing made because it was a circus. It really was a circus. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Sean too. You know, the thing is this, I know it took a long time and pretty much everybody that I know of was really cool about it. They understood the problems that were going on and what he was dealing with. Um, and to, for those of you that are just, you know, that don't know anything about this, um, I will also I'm going to, I'm going to actually talk about the supply chain issue with vinyl. So but the interesting thing is this album guardians of the void. So, you know, the first three tremors album I thought was crazy. It was insane. Like it was balls to the wall. This one is a little more refined. Um, the songwriting is a little more refined. Um, it's hard to say which one I like better. I actually think the crazier album before this, which was album of the year, by the way, when it came out, is a, I like it a little bit better just because it's balls to the wall and insane. <laughs> but this is still definitely a very, very good record. And, you know, Sean also, just I just want to throw this out there. For those of us that had ordered the everything pack, right? I think I ordered everything plus two vinyls, right? He did refund people's money for because this is the only uh, one that he was able to get printed. Anybody that ordered more than one variant, because he had like three different variants, I think, you got your money back f if you didn't get that variant. So that's something cool with Sean. And the thing is, I remember back, when, if everybody remembers the whole Pledge of Music fiasco, and I believe the first Three Tremors album was actually involved with that. Pledge of Music was, and you can go find articles on it, it was this site where artists were using, they were using it to, for I don't know if the people were, were doing a GoFundMe with it. I don't remember exactly what it was, but you basically artists were selling their stuff through it and pledge music took all the money 
never paid the artists and kind of just went bankrupt, disappeared, whatever they did. And so pretty much every band went and said, sorry, you have to take it up with them. We're not going to give you the merchandise you ordered because none of the bands got paid. However, Sean decided to send everybody their merchandise anyway. And even though he didn't get any money for it, he at least made sure the fans got money for it. That's something that I'll always have respect for. And that is something he definitely deserves to be complimented on. Now, why did this album take so long? And instead of sitting here and explaining it to you, I'm going to play you a clip from a podcast that I did earlier this year with actually Sean was a part of it, uh, but myself uh, Justin Roth, who you know has worked for bands like Exodus and and is you know he's from a band called War Curse and they are actually coming out with an album hopefully this year uh, on Metal Blade Records. But he talks about it and Sean talks about it. They talk about why vinyl records and why getting them made is so difficult for everybody. So I'm going to let you check this clip out, and this will give you a better explanation of of why this took so long. So let's talk about merchandise for a minute and sean does a lot of really great merchandising justin that just crazy stuff like you can buy the cd you can buy the cd and shirt there's four different kinds of vinyl and then he always has these packages where he throws together like every single thing you can get in some giant package and it's actually really well done but it's been a challenge getting that stuff produced and oh yeah actually getting it made and and sean maybe you can shed some light in that because i I can attest to the fact that you've gone through hell trying to get some of these albums even made, even printed, because, you know, what happens is the factory says, okay, we'll have it done for you in six months. And then they go, yeah, it's going to be another three months. And it ends up being a year. Then it ends up being a year and a half. And that's happened yeah. to a lot of people. I just got the Three Tremors album finally uh, everything checked off with this new company. I went through like 10 companies. Most of the companies wouldn't even take the business. They're like, we have two, we're not taking any new customers. We have too many orders. So that I went through all that after I fired the Canadian company Microform because they were just horrible to work with. And shipping was 10 times more expensive out of Canada because of their, their bullshit. Again, yep. I'm a proponent of invading Canada. I think we should free them from their, uh, the chains and shackles that have been placed on that country. Those poor people up there. Canada is a disaster. Don't get me started on it. This isn't a show about Canada. But yeah, so getting vinyls made has been impossible. All the Chinese stuff has been great. Like uh, the Alibaba, the keychains and the socks and the uh, lenticular prints and um, the koozies. All that stuff is like the Chinese lickety split. But, you know, you deal anywhere else. Right now, I'm getting I'm getting the vinyls made in Sweden, and it's only because it's the friend of a friend that owns it that they took my business. Um, otherwise, you can't even get in the door because the vinyls are so backed up. And you know, uh, hopefully that hopefully that gets better with the supply chain getting better. But I mean, everything is just on such an inflationary trajectory. It's weird. It wasn't like that two years ago. It's like something happened that changed. <laughs> it's like, well, two years, I don't know what happened two years ago. Taylor Swift. That's what happened. Oh um, uh, yeah, well, yeah, and then Adele too. I, Adele yeah. had a million vinyls being made, and that fucked it up. But yeah, um, yeah. It, it's it's the I hang out in a record store like almost every day. I, I was actually there right before we jumped on this podcast. Okay, it, and it is it is fucking insane. Like you know, record stores. I'm sure. I mean, the two of you, you're you're also like fellow record nerds. Like the the, the clientele at the record store has changed so much over the last couple of years, where it used to be middle-aged white dudes like ourselves like flipping through the it was music nerds it was fucking it was virgin men and like sonic youth t-shirts and shit but like it is now like <laughs> teenage girls and like college kids and yeah the fucking clientele is wild man but it's like the big really? vinyl the vinyl resurgence mixed with kind of the supply chain shit which i'm pretty tired of that excuse mixed yeah. with the but it, but it's these big mega artists like taylor swift did that shit where she released i think seven variants I might be wrong, but no one's going to call us on it on this show. But I think it was like seven variants. And the more of them that you bought, you got prioritized like further up the line when the pre-sales went on sale for her tour. 
So like she gouged the fuck out of her fans and like forced them to buy seven variants of the same album. And that just clogged the fuck out of the production chain. So, now that comes straight from, now I was doing that. That comes straight from the comic book industry and it's smart. You, the Virgin variant, the, you know, you gotta, ha you gotta collect them all. And that's how it works in the comic game. And, and that's been deep in the comic game for a while, but yeah, you gotta be able to produce them. But Taylor Swift had the power mm -hmm. to shove it down these record companies' throats, um, the, the manufacturers and get them made. And then little fans like us, you know, they're like, well, we're at 13 months right now. I mean, KK's Priest had to delay everything because because of their vinyl manufacturing situation. I mean, that's just one, one band that I know that had their entire uh, campaign delayed in the middle of the campaign uh, because of the vinyl. Um, my advice to bands right now, uh, when you get started and you really want to make it, you you know, the, the, a way to be successful is quit. <laughs> well, a little late for that. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think the vinyl thing, we're going to have to have a tough conversation this week in that regard as well because we're handing over a finished album. And so I'm signed to Metal Blade currently. And uh, Metal Blade is telling me, and I, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm allowed to talk about this shit. I don't think this is any big secret because everybody's backed up. But it's like nine to ten months right now from like submission yeah. to like vinyl production and that's like a best case scenario so with this being february 10 months from now is december you guys both know you don't release a fucking album in december like you don't no, release anything never. anything after anything after black friday record store day and then like through like the second or third week of january is where things pick back up so like i mean what am i gonna do like sit on this fucking album until next year yeah. to like 2024 the other option is to release with no vinyl do the cd and do a pre-order for vinyl at which point like selling a seven or eight eight month old record that everybody's fucking streamed 700 times on spotify <laughs> that they're not nearly as excited about as they were the day it came out so i'm forfeiting sales so it's like do i sacrifice the sales or do i sacrifice eight months of sitting around on my ass and i can't really get fresh tours and i can't get things going because i'm on a fucking three-year-old album right now all right so there you have it this is the problem with vinyl albums and unfortunately if you are a band as was mentioned in that clip if you are a band on a label you might wait a year to put your album out after it's recorded after it's mixed after it's mastered which sucks right which really does suck i mean it's not it's not a good thing you know you probably have the option obviously to put the album out without the vinyl being out but then you're waiting a year and you're losing sales so again this is a huge huge problem and if you're a more independent label a lot of these factories may not even take your business because they want insane minimums and that is because of of huge artists pop artists placing an order for a million albums you know these factories you got to understand this okay and i'll give you a different viewpoint on it i shoot mainly almost all analog photography meaning that i shoot mainly on film well there are only so many film cameras out there because they're not really very few people make them anymore and when you buy them up and the demand goes up and they're not being made anymore the price skyrockets okay and the same thing would go with film because you only have so much equipment left to produce camera film the demand goes up and the price goes up well with vinyl albums it's the same kind of thing where you have you basically have only so many presses vinyl presses in factories that exist in the world and most of the stuff that was producing vinyl say 30 40 years ago a lot of that equipment is destroyed was was discarded or whatnot and before the whole vinyl resurgence happened you you had more than enough you know factory you know more than enough equipment to make this stuff well now that the thing is caught on and everybody's buying vinyl all of a sudden you have this demand that's far exceeding the capacity for these factories to actually produce this stuff so as he talked about he you know sean he found a factory, I think he found a place in Sweden that, that, that did this. But man, it, it, it took in some pulling in some favors to get this done. 
and that's a huge problem. This is why, folks, this is why when you see bands put out pre-orders and like the album doesn't come out for like another eight, nine months, that's why. Because they are waiting for, they're basically waiting for the merchandise to get done. And, and they give it a little bit of leeway time because what happens is, let's say a, a factory or let's say, you know, you place an order. Well, what ends up happening is they might tell you six months and then nine months later, it still may not be done, which has also caused a lot of delays as far as pre-orders go. In fact, anything that I've pre-ordered so far that had vinyl as part of the deal, 90% of the time it has taken probably an extra two months for the vinyl to show up extra month, whatever the case may be, but it's happening. Unfortunately, it's something that is happening, and it's unfortunate that we as music fans and metalheads, we have to just deal with it. Because right now, these these factories are just completely booked to capacity. But I, will, I do want to give a shout out, though, at the end of this podcast here to Sean. Guardians of the Void, the vinyl version is definitely very, very nicely done. It's definitely not disappointing. And even though I waited a year and a half, I'm extremely happy with this thing. So with that being said, thanks for watching. If you like what you see and hear on this podcast, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or hit that little bell to be notified anytime I do post a video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.